Welcome to this session on discussing UGC Net Geography paper for June 2014 examination. In this class, we would be discussing the paper 2. So paper 2 consists of 50 questions in geography. Uh, what we will be doing is we will be dividing this class into three sections and we will be discussing 15 questions in one, 15 in second and 20 questions in the last class. So we will start with the first question that was asked for the June 2014 examination. The first question that was asked was landscape produced by single so was landscape produced by a single dominant geographical process is known as the answer for this question is very direct simple landscapes are those which are produced by single geographical feature compound landscapes on the other hand are produced by multiple geographical uh, geomorphic processes the next question is the next question is again from geomorphology the question asks flat top sand ridges with long dimensions extending parallel to the prevailing wind but locking the collapsing fronts are known as the answer to this question is very direct the answer is whalebacks so whaleback are what are known as flat top sand ridges that have long dimensions and they are found in various places so here is a classic example of whaleback I'll help you understand with means of a diagram. So here is the diagram for whale bags. So these are kind of whale bags. They are flat top. The above structure as you can see is flat. They look like parallel to one another. Parallel to the prevailing wind direction and they uh, lock the fronts that are coming in the midway. So this was again a question from geomorphology. Most of the questions this time were direct and the answers to these questions were direct. The next question, the river whose course is controlled by factors which are not determinable are known as. The answer is insequent. Insequent is one. The term this was given by Thornbury and Thornbury classifies and explains that any river valley, the course of which rivers are not controlled, I cannot be determined, are known as insequent. That means they show no apparent adjustment to the structure or the initial slope line. Now here is a question. This is something, a very direct question. You must learn and you must remember them to answer. You must remember things to answer such questions. So here is the question. The list of books and authors. So which author wrote which book? So the answer is very clear. Morphology of Earth was written by King. So you have Morphology of Earth written by King. Then you have Principles of Geomorphology by Thornbury. The next is Unstable Earth written by Steers. And then finally Study of Landforms written by R.J. Small. So these are the correct answers for it. This is something based on your basic knowledge and you must and must know these terms. Uh, nothing else rather than remembering the terms. So the next question. Now this is a very important section. Slope replacement model was proposed by. For slope evolution, we generally talk about three models. First is slope decline. Okay. Let's start with slope decline model. Slope decline model was given by Davis. And Davis says that the, as the upper slope weathers uh, or erodes at a faster rate, so the, the decline in the slope is faster. So for example, this is a hill. The upper area will erode at a faster rate than the lower areas. And hence, the decline in the slope is faster. So that's the slope decline theory given by Davis. The next is slope replacement, uh, the slope replacement theory by Penck. 
who gave the slope replacement theory. In this theory, what he talks about is, he says that original slope is being replaced by lower angle slopes that extends uh, further up. So you have a constant angle and it extends upward. So that is a kind of replacement in the slope that is provided by the slope replacement theory by Pank. And next is the slope retreat or parallel retreat given by King. King gave the concept of parallel retreat and this is mainly applied to semi-arid areas or uh, I should say the cliff platforms or wave cut platforms. The maximum angle is constant for this case. As uh, you see there is increase in concave characteristics. Okay, So the maximum angle is same for this but it increases as you go upwards. Now the next question is on climatology. Again a question from root memory. Who among the following observed that summer heating of the Tibetan plateau was an important factor in monsoon circulation over India? So the answer for this question is very direct. Hele, Hele gave the concept of heating of the Tibetan plateau and because of that they say there is monsoon circulation in India. So the incoming of monsoon, so monsoon collides and due to the circulation and heating here there is a low pressure zone and winds move from high pressure to, to low pressure. So there is a area of monsoon circulation over India. Again a question on climatology but that again from throat knowledge. According to Koppel's scheme climate E polar mountain type climate is formed in. Now the answer itself is given in the question. The climate classification is E or the polar mountain type. So since we know the polar mountain type classification can be found in the higher altitudes, the northern part of Jammu Kashmir has E type of climate, extreme north and then slowly and gradually the trend changes as you move towards the north or uh, towards the south. Next question again on climatology. So this question is about understanding wind and factors that affect wind. So which of the following factors does not affect wind? Now most of the question, most of the students do not read the word not here and that makes a significant difference. Pressure gradient, friction and coriolis force, all three affect the flow of wind. So wind is due to pressure gradient. So if there is a high pressure and low pressure difference that causes wind. Okay. Then since there is a difference in high pressure and low pressure due to which the winds move or change and that is due to Coriolis effect. So Coriolis effect turns our high pressure system in the clockwise direction. So high pressure would turn into clockwise direction and low pressure into anti-clockwise direction. So clockwise is anti-cyclonic. And anti-clockwise is cyclonic. So low pressure would have cyclonic features and uh, high pressure would have anti-cyclonic features. Again, as the Coriolis effect is more, uh, it's more with the fast moving objects. So friction has to do with the deflection of winds. Next question. Which of the following locations listed below should have highest annual temperature range? Now the highest annual range of temperature is found in mid latitude continental center. So what happens in mid latitude continental center is there are temperature extremes uh, always depends on what factors. They depend on height, they depend on latitudes, they depend on surface condition, density and uh, length of observation. So altitude is one of the primary features. Latitude is another feature. Then you have surface conditions. Finally, you have density. These are some of the features based on which the range of temperature depends on. So in this case, what happens is the world's highest temperature and greatest range of extremes are usually found 
over continental areas in the uh, temperate zone. So the answer is middle altitude continental center. Next is, this is a question from our day to day life. Whenever you are in temple or somewhere doing uh, um, a daily prayer service, what happens is camphor is a common substance that is used. And what happens when you put a camphor in a plate? Camphor or kapoor, what we call, if you put it in a plate, what happens is it directly evaporates. So it passes from a solid state into a gaseous state. And there is no liquid state in which it turns. And this is what is known as sublimation. The main source, next is the question on environment. What is the main source of carbon monoxide pollution in atmosphere? Now, as we all know, carbon monoxide, the main source of pollution is natural. Now, natural is not an option here. So, natural like volcanic activities is a primary source of carbon monoxide pollution. Besides natural, you have artificial sources. So, the primary source in the artificial source is vehicle exhaust or gasoline exhaust. So, that is what is the main source of carbon monoxide pollution. The next question is based on oceanography. So, what is the known, which of the following features are known to cause vertical movement of cold water from inside to the above layers which are warm? So, you have warm layers on the top, you have cold layers on the bottom, and this vertical movement, what it does is it replaces the warm air on the top. So this is known as, this phenomenon is known as upwelling. The next feature is, which of the following types of seafloor sediments includes calcareous and siliceous ooze? Now there are various types of um, sedimentation and ocean, uh, various types of ocean deposits. The most common is the biogenous deposits. What happens in biogenous deposits, it's of two types. It can be due to calcium content or silica content. So those due to calcium content are known as calcareous. Those due to silica contents are known as siliceous. And both of them are mainly found in the shells or skeletons of the animals that, uh, that deposit on the ocean surface as the organism dies. And the next question is, In this question, what we are talking about is food chain and food pyramid. So, uh, there are large number of herbivorous animals along with carnivorous animals like lions, jackals, hyenas, and these are found in the answer is the tropical grasslands of Africa, which are known as savannas, have a large number of herbivorous animals along with carnivorous animals. Now this is the last question that we would be discussing today. In this question what we talk about is you have to match the list. So you have the list of primary and secondary consumers. So what are these? Green plants. You have a plant. And what does it do? It produces for itself, so green plants are always the producers. Plant parasites are the primary consumers this, that directly consume on the plants. Then what are animal, uh, what are secondary consumers? Secondary consumers are those which feed on primary consumers. So animal parasite feeds on animals and therefore it's a secondary consumer. And finally, you have fungi, which are which is a decomposer. So fungi decomposes whatever is left from the earth surface. Now, as we can see from this trend, most of the questions were either from uh, the initial section was geomorphology, climatology, oceanography, and then you have environmental geography. 
So we can say, in essence, the questions were from physical geography. And none of the question was either conceptual or applicative. 90% of the questions were based on direct knowledge. So you must know the concept. The only thing is some of the questions which were direct were easy. And some of the questions were uh, difficult. Like for example, knowing the names of the books and the authors for geomorphology. That was a direct question, but it was difficult. So you must know the names. That is what is required for paper two. We'll be seeing more kinds of conceptual and applicative questions in paper three. But for paper two, we have uh, worked out the first section today. We'll be continuing with the second and third sessions where we will be discussing the remaining questions. Let's see the paper trend as in when we go. Hope you enjoyed this session. Stay tuned for the next class. Have a good day ahead.